And hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. How the heck are you? I am Diana Clarion, the Lavender Lady, and this is Coffee with Lavender. And today is going to be a absolutely wonderful show. Yes, yes, Sylvia, <laughs> today is going to be a wonderful show. Yeah, Sylvia's giving me a hard time down there. She always does. Uh, yeah, now you can see her in the uh, in the screen. Uh, we have with us... Uh, Adriana, who Hi. goes by the handle Insects Are Cool. Hi, how the heck are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> We're getting there slowly but surely. Hey, everybody oh. in the side chat, would you, um, you know, you know the drill by now. Let us know um, if you can hear <laughs> Adriana. And, oh, can you hear um, me? Yeah, because uh, you know how my my setup is here. It's it's always giving me a hard time. I just want to make sure that you can hear what she has to say because she has so many wonderful things to say. And oh my word, yes. And Sylvia is always saying things too. Cool. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the uh, how do you want to call it? Okay, I'm not hearing anything about not hearing. So this is a good thing. I'm like beautiful for once. The sound is good. <laughs> it work? Damn, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe St. Patrick's Day is magic, huh? How do you like <laughs> lucky, that? Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So okay, let's get this underway. Let's get this started. Adriana, you have the uh, the uh, handle, the the Twitter name in. Mm -hmm. And the um, YouTube name, insects are cool. Mm -hmm. Do yep. I take it then that you that means that you kind of like insects? Sort of? <laughs> yeah, I like insects. Okay, because <laughs> um, you know that's that's not always on everybody's uh, short list of things they love. Um, <laughs> and I was looking in the side chat as as were you earlier. Um, yeah when Smitty made a comment there uh, saying <laughs> hi and yeah. he's got a he's got a crab he's got a spider <laughs> yeah he's got a scorpion and yeah, um, those are insects yeah so okay <laughs> what exactly is an insect uh, let me give one my insects uh, that might help me explain uh, say again please uh, uh, I'm getting one of my insects that might help me to explain yeah, uh, please. As an example. Could, yeah, let us know uh, just what it is that makes an insect an insect. Uh, that's all good. It's just an... Sorry, you insect. Not insect. Uh, what do we have going okay. on over here? Okay. Uh, I got a combo Uh, it's okay. So first of all, insects have one pair of antennas. They usually have two pairs of antennas. Uh, secondly, they uh, the pairs of legs. Uh, I don't think you can see that very well, but they always have three pairs of, le of legs. Uh, so the spiders have four pairs of legs, so they're not insects. Uh, -huh. uh but they're in they're still arthropods, though, so they're still related to insects, but they're not in insects. Along with crabs and uh, the scorpion, he also mentioned. Yeah, because yeah, the the scorpion would be more related to it to the spider, right? Uh, uh, I think the I think scorpions are arach arachnids. I think both I think both scorpions and spiders are arachnids, so they're both related. Okay, f okay, fine. I'm gonna learn something before this is over. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 That's right. It's not very often that people have a love for you know things like mm -hmm. insects most people think oh icky mm -hmm. you know that sort of yeah. thing so how is it that you develop this this affinity this this liking for for insects how'd that happen uh i may have been about that a, like, a couple of days ago i think uh, i don't know you saw it, uh, but uh, I, I mentioned it story. Actually, I did there. see it. I'm okay. kind of priming everybody yeah. into it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because there's a funny story in there. There's a funny story in there. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I think I'll just mention when I got to college. Uh, let's get to the first part. Uh, 
So I went to college originally as a computer science major. And, and then I took one class, like, like one, I took one computer science class and I, I really hated it. And the, the class literally made me cry. Oh no, and it's gotta be a bad class. <laughs> yeah. And they taught uh, Java in that class, and like I said, I really hated it. It really, it, it maybe it literally made me cry. So, anyway, I was looking for a different major now. Uh, so, and then my sister, uh, she's a year younger than me. Uh, she was also going to college. Uh, she was originally an English major. Uh, and then some people were being neg negative to her. Like, I think even her teachers were. Uh, I mean, people were being negative to her, saying she wasn't going to get a job or anything. English is a bad major. So, uh... Yeah, that... A lot of people have that to say, and I don't get it. But that's not part of the story. When I, what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. is not part of the story. Let's put it that way. It's okay. Okay, uh... So, I think she was saying Muggy, a new major, too. Uh, and she took this class called Insects and Shizy. So, she started thinking about becoming an entomologist, too. Uh, but then after a while, she changed her mind, and she went back to English. Uh, and then, uh, I got, I heard about entomology from her, so I got interested in entomology, and then I replaced her. Alrighty and, uh, then. And, uh, actually, I, I didn't mention this in the video, but actually, that, that's pretty accurate for me and my sister's like personalities. My sister has always loved writing, so she being English major is pretty really good for her. But I have always loved science, so I think that's it turned out really well. Okay, and then what you are an entomologist professionally now or are you working up to that uh, or uh I'm at five years in college as a double major for typology and entomology. Uh I quit college for a stupid reason that I'm not gonna mention in Right, right now. Okay. So uh, I don't, I don't actually have my have a major right now. I, I might try going back me next semester. I have, I don't know yet. Uh, I do. I have taken enough classes. I can only, I can at least get my minor in as long as I want to, though. Alrighty then. Um, yeah, because I was just wondering because that would have made a mm -hmm. a beautiful addition in more ways than one to the field of entomology, but. Uh, mm -hmm. That's another story entirely. Shut up, Clarion. Uh, <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, when it comes to your uh, avatar for your Twitter mm -hmm. and for uh, your YouTube, mm -hmm. I noticed that that is a, a beautiful little, a little mm -hmm. creature there, but I'm not exactly sure whether that is a butterfly or a moth. And, you know, how the heck do you tell the difference? Oh, okay, not... Topic, uh, do I have a moth? Uh, I think I just have butterflies, so I think I have a moth. Okay, so I can't give an example, but, uh, so, butterflies, uh, they have antenna that's, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it, it's just, actually, I can go on. Nah, okay, so butterflies have this, like, sl like slender antenna, like, really thin antenna, I guess. Uh, okay. But the and the moths have uh, this antenna that they're called plumos antenna and it, it kind of looks like a flip feather. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, yes, yeah, Smitty's saying something that look like feathers. Yeah. Yeah. That's what plumos means, feather. So. Okay. They gotcha. kind of look like feathers. Uh, I don't know that if I explained it well enough. Uh, and also, uh, this isn't a like a hard rule or anything, but generally butterflies are out in the day and the moths are out at night, but that's not 100% all, all of them, though. Like, so some moths will be out in the day sometimes. Yeah, you and Aaron Ra could get together on that one with the systematics <laughs> of the insect classification. Yeah, I would love to talk to Aaron Ra. <laughs> <laughs> he is a big sweetie. Uh, I hope you get the uh, hope you get the uh, opportunity to do that. I've worked with him a couple couple of times, and he is yeah. He looks like a Klingon, but he's a big teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, you know the the one butterfly that you have is your um, avatar. It, yeah, the, it, it's it's definitely my favorite insect. 
Oh, uh, that was going to be one of my one of my questions. <laughs> yeah. That is your favorite, it, it, okay? Yep. And just the way it looks, was that picture taken in natural light, or was that in? Yeah, I got say, it from Wikipedia. Say again, please. Yeah, I got it, I got it from Wikipedia. Okay, okay. So I I know, or I think I know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. That a lot of insects look different under say ultraviolet than they do under sunlight uh is is that the case Uh, or um how does that work ultraviolet uh uh well it's specifically for this butterfly the more the butterfly in my profile picture is specifically the morpho aga um morpho butterflies have these little the scales and I think it's supposed to reflect light, I think. But uh, I'm still not sure about the. I don't know much about ultraviolet, I think. I don't know. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Actually, uh, scorpions, uh, are you trying to. I mean, maybe this is what you're doing. Uh, are you trying to. Uh, a little light, uh, what, what they're called? Person light? Or something, or something. Uh, the, the uh, scorpions. Supposed, if it's a true scorpion, if if it's a true scorpion, it won't glow. But if it's the true scorpion, it'll actually re- like reflect the lights. That makes sense. Okay, I think I think so. Cause is, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, because uh, I was that, wondering it's, whether it's not all butterf- Yeah, I was wondering if that butterfly was yeah. Was glowing because it's the very, very brilliant. Uh, blue. I, think, I, think, I, think it's na- I think it's natural. The, the Morpho Ega, I think that's a, just it's natural lights. Okay. Uh, and I think you had mentioned that that's a Brazilian. Yeah, it's from Brazil. Now, does that get anywhere near North America or is it just uh, indigenous uh, to that neighborhood? Uh, pretty much just South America, unfortunately. Oh, darn it. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I know. I really want to go over to Brazil. Just to yeah. see butterfly. Now, here comes something that's rather apocalyptic here. We're talking about an insect collapse. Yeah, that that's I've heard been, mentioned yeah. made. All right. Very what, recently, too. Well, it's, what, always in, it's probably always in the news, so. But yeah, there's been recent talks what, about it. What is that, and how is it happening? Uh, insect apocalypse, like the insect apocalypse, uh, uh, like a f- insects are rapidly declining. Uh, and I've, I read this article. I, I don't know how accurate it was. I, I don't understand what it meant, but uh, it's a there's this article that was recently published like a month ago or so. Uh, they said that like a, a, like if you don't do anything about the insects, like insects could disappear in like a hundred years or something, I think that's what it said. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. and it's it sounds drastic. It sounds it sounds like it's not a good thing. I mean, for for humans. <laughs> no, it's not a good thing. It's it's not a good thing because uh, insects provide us with food. Uh, they help. Uh, they, they also help us with like the decomposers and stuff and all that. Uh, if it's disappear, we won't have things like honey. Yeah, and that would not be a good thing because I like honey in yeah. my coffee from time to time. <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. On, on my channel, I always try. I I'm, I always try to. Uh, I, I really like uh, supporting wildlife charities, particularly about insects because of that. Am I are we buffering? I don't know. I see Smitty complaining about buffering and purple. I I see you saying uh, buffering. Uh, are you having a problem as well? Because I'm not noticing a problem here, but usually when there's buffering, it's usually on the broadcaster's end. <laughs> I'll keep I'll that in mind, Smitty. <laughs> Hi, Badger. How you doing? Uh, yeah, so this this collapse, you're, you're saying it could oh. deprive us of of dinner? Um, yeah. It could. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've already eaten some insects before. I've actually eaten insects. 
uh, I mean, the grasshopper and the mealworm, the crickets. Uh, I don't know if I eat anything else. Uh, I've actually eaten insects like live. I actually, I actually eat live insects. Unfortunately, they don't let people on Fear Factor. I, they, they, uh... don't, they don't let uh, entomologists on Fear Factor because of that. Oh darn it! That that, that yeah. would be so much. No, I don't yeah. know if I, I don't know if they I don't could bring us. My... Yeah, they don't let it's all it's all just on there because because of that. I don't know if I could bring myself to eat an insect while it was still crawling. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially if it starts crawling down my throat, it would be a little bit. No, I can take some things, but it I just have chewed my it before it gets there. <laughs> That's what I did. Oh my! And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have that notebook that Johnny Carson has because I had something in my head and it went all bye-bye and I forgot exactly what I was going to say, but that always happens to me. Don't worry about it. Um, that's the... Um, when you say about eating insects, uh, is, is that a common thing? I mean, does that happen... Throughout the world, um, or well, is it... yeah, it's not very common in America, but yeah, it's very common in other countries, like, like in Africa, like they they eat, like spires and stuff. Okay, and is that mainly a, is is that a staple of their diet, or is that just a <laughs> snack? I mean, seriously, it. Uh, I think it's it's a, yeah, it's a staple in our countries. Uh, like I said, they'll eat. They'll eat scorpions and other stuff. No, wait a minute. Scorpion for dinner? I might draw the line there. <laughs> um, I hope they don't eat the stinger. Oh, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's... You're uh, a relatively recent arrival here, aren't you, to the, um, to the community? Yep. Because uh, when did you... I think I see you started your... Twitter in uh, this month, was it? Uh, I just think it was this month. Uh, let me check. Now, what what brought you here? I mean, uh, uh I don't exactly remember. I think the first people, you know, it's you and then Neil and, and everybody else in, in, in like the chat right now at Purple. Hashtag Heaton and so on. Uh, I think the first person in this commu little community we have, uh, I think it was Neil. I, th I think Neil. No, it wasn't Neil. Sorry. Uh, I don't remember who the first person I encountered to join this community, but I just got here. Yeah, I know that yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I Neil has mentioned you a couple of times. And yeah. uh, have, have you been on his program? Uh, not yet. I'm going to be on his program on the 9th, I think. Oh, of April. Yeah, I'm going to be there on April, on April 9th. All right, everybody in the side chat, get your pencils <laughs> out, get your notebooks out. Adriana is going to be on Neil's program mm -hmm. in 9th of April. Okay, be there already. Mm -hmm. uh, she definitely deserves all of our support, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, The other thing I wonder is, uh, you know, you're coming to the, the community. How is it that... Well, I, I'm going to step on Neil's territory a little bit here. And uh, how how is it that, that you came to be atheist? Okay, okay, we're never going to talk about my conversions right now. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, <laughs> actually, this might be a long story. Because uh, uh, I have a, I actually have a deconversion story part one and then a deconversion story part two. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I guess this start should be, like, my family... Uh, my mom, I think, I, th I think my mom's an atheist. Uh, so my mom's side of family isn't very, re very religious. Uh, but uh, then on my my dad's side of family, uh, my dad is a Christian still. Uh, but he he's a he, he's kind of like a laid back Christian. Like uh, he still believes in evolution and gay rights and stuff all that. But he's still a Christian. Uh, uh, although the rest of my dad's family is crazy, uh, they're like homophobes and racist and so on. Oh boy. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a, it was a really bad family. Uh, 
I saw, I think it's what's funny about my dad's so my family is that a lot of them are divorced, even though the Bible says you're not supposed to get divorced. Right, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> not a not a good thing. He who marries yeah. and, and uh, he who divorces and remarries is committing adultery. Yeah, yeah that garbage. Yeah, um, yeah uh, uh, that's in Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-two. <laughs> yeah, somebody remembers their somebody remembers their <laughs> New Testament. <laughs> Doing Wait, better I said, than I am. I said it. Okay, okay, so uh, okay, so I'll continue. Uh, uh, so growing up, uh, okay, so my, like I said, my mom's not religious or anything. Uh, so, but I didn't realize, realize it until later that she she did believe in, in the God. Uh, so anyway, so growing up, I, and I live in the Bible Belt. I'm in Oklahoma, so I, I live in the Bible Belt, and uh, I I didn't realize until later that atheism was even a thing. I didn't I didn't realize ever such thing as atheists. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I actually knew what atheist was. If I did know what an atheist was, I think I probably would thought they were weird, but I didn't. I, I don't know. I wouldn't hate them or anything. I thought they would be weird though. Um. So uh, anyway, I was uh, I was still a Christian for a long time, I guess. But it, it, I was laid back like my dad though, like evolution and all that. Um. It wasn't until I was seven, seventeen, I think. Uh, so I already mentioned my sister. Uh, at 17, I realized my sister, I heard my sister said that she was an atheist. And uh, I was a little surprised about that. And uh, I guess it, it kind of like turned some cogs in my mind, I guess. <laughs> like, uh, So I, as I heard my sister was an atheist, I actually started going to the internet and doing a, a bunch of research. Uh, I, I did research like uh uh let's see like a uh, like IQ uh, Christians and stuff uh, IQs and stuff. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh let's see. Uh, I also ended up finding some atheist YouTube channels. I listen. I watched. Uh, mostly. Was, at the time, I was only listen, watching uh two different YouTubers: uh, Cult of Dusty and Dark Matter Twenty Five Twenty Five. Oh yes, I I yeah. definitely know John. Um, he's got some definitely good stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Dusty, I I've been following him for for years, and he's okay as far as that oh. goes. Um, I won't call him my favorite person, and he's yeah. not going to want to hear that. But uh, <laughs> not, not a yeah. bad little thing. It's interesting though. I haven't heard you mention somebody. You mentioned you're in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, anywhere near Seth Andrews, the Thinking Atheist. But, uh, Wait, is it Seth Andrews in Oklahoma? Uh, Seth Andrews is, oh my word, if I remember correctly, somewhere near Tulsa. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, he's one of the first uh, atheist personalities I encountered. Uh, he, he definitely was instrumental in drawing me into the movement. Um mm -hmm. Now that would be so wonderful if you were close enough that you you know, you know, go up the driveway and knock on the door and say <laughs> hi to Seth and Natalie and uh, Linus, but uh, yeah, yeah, he was, he, was born, he was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, is he still in Oklahoma? Yeah, Abs uh, okay. Whenever he's not traveling, you know, Oklahoma is where he makes his home. Okay, uh, okay, I did not know that. Thank you for telling me that. Where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had the. Yeah. No, I'm not a gay male. You know? <laughs> Hang on a second while I clear my throat here. <laughs> there, much better. I hate coughing into the microphone. It's it's not a very <laughs> nice thing. And um, okay, I pulled my necklace apart. No problem. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's uh, as I say, he's. One of the uh, one of the people who definitely got me into this uh, mm -hmm. movement, and um, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that I can get to um, Kentucky. I don't know if you do any mm -hmm. traveling. Um, there's the uh, uh, not a lot, not a lot. The, until I got until I went to college, uh, like the only two states I've been into was uh, Oklahoma, and Texas. Uh, I know uh, in college uh, I had I had uh, my college actually paid for me to uh, uh, so there's actually a society like or 
society or organization called the the Entom entomological society of america there's actually there's an actual like convention for insect lovers actually so uh, okay yeah it, i did that's funny uh so anyway, uh, I had, I did a little traveling doing that. I went to I've been to New Mexico, uh, went to Colorado. Uh, I, I mean I've been to Kansas now, but that's not because of entomology though. Ah, now Kansas is uh, the stomping grounds of another of our people. Uh, if you're familiar with Brooke McCormick, she's uh, at uh, Kansas State University right now. So I don't cool. know if you've got around that area. Mm, I went to Wichita. Okay, she's she's in Manhattan, mm -hmm. so I think that's yeah. yeah. Um, and I've only been there like twice, I think. Okay. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you're you're a little bit far from Pittsburgh, so I'm not going to expect to see <laughs> yeah. her anytime soon. But it mm -hmm. would be terrific. It really would, um, and it would be wonderful to see you in Kentucky because I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if I have to walk there mm -hmm. to get to um, the uh, protest against Ken Ham's Ark Encounter. And oh, uh, yeah. if there's any way you can get down there, or up there, actually, I guess, because, mm -hmm. yeah, higher latitude, mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be wonderful to see you there. Oh. And anybody on the side, uh, side chat people, have you got any specific questions for Adriana? Um, Other questions? Yeah, questions are always good. Uh, if, even even when they don't have immediate answers, um, I see that we're talking about cats back there. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, your cats move around. Now let's yeah let's see what uh, let's see what Sylvie is up to, but that's beside the point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you are. Oh, you're trying to eat my house plants again. Yeah, that's what you're <laughs> doing. I don't know about these kitties here. Um, but besides all that, um, yeah, we so have. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I didn't know Seth Andrews was in Oklahoma. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I guess if, uh, he's if he's close by, it would be, you know, fantastic yeah. Yeah. to see you say hi and, you know, who knows, mm. maybe even be interviewed on a show because mm. um, he's interviewed me uh, a couple of times already and he's a sweetie. He's an absolute sweetie. Oh, look at this. Okay, we've got something from Mark Caesar. Uh, it, it calls you Bugs Lady. I, I love yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like being, I like Bug Lady. Why is it that so many bugs in Australia are so deadly? Huh. Which, yeah, I guess... Um, I guess you could say that about bugs. You could say that... Oh, that's a question I'm going to have. Uh, I have... Uh, you can say that about bugs. You can say that about just about anything. Um, the things in Australia that will not kill you want to. Uh, <laughs> but um, any ideas of uh, why you have so many uh, deadly <laughs> bugs and insects? Mm, I try to try and think. Uh, I think. I noticed that, like, south of the aquarium, you give some really interesting insects, it's like like the Morphoeaga and stuff, but in America, we don't get a really ton of really interesting insects. I, I don't know, I mean, it has something to do with the southern hemisphere, I, I think. Uh, or, uh, Australia is like. Where is Australia? And I, I don't totally know the answer to that, but that's an interesting question. Okay, so we're gonna we're we're gonna chuck that and we're gonna find the answer at some point. But Mark, you you um, have say again. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where it really actually is on on, on like the world map. Uh, could, oh. be some, could be something to do with the equator. Yeah, uh, actually, Australia is. About as far south of the equator as uh, the U.S. is north, if mem if memory serves me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Australia okay. is real. Yeah, Mark uh, Mark <laughs> mentions that it's it's not a figment yeah. of anyone's imagination. But uh, he called you Bugs Lady, and that mm -hmm. is the one thing people I hear a lot 
uh, use bug and insect interchangeably, mm-hmm. but they're really not the same thing, are they? Um, is a oh. I think a bug is a kind of insect. Yeah, Ken Ham, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, what what is it that makes a bug a bug? Okay, uh, so uh, in like actual. So bug is used uh, like colloquially as an insect, but uh, there's actually a, like an order order of insects called true bugs. Uh, that's the order hem- Uh So this would include like bed bugs, uh, what are bugs, wheel bugs. Uh, I'd have a clue of uh, the scales uh, and other stuff. Uh, also, what's funny is that ladybugs are not a bug. They're they're beetle, not a bug. They're in the order Coleoptera. Uh, so there's just between bugs and other insects. Uh, let's see. Uh, they have like hem- hemiloptera. I'm using really scientific terms. Uh, they have their. So yeah, it's like bed bugs and stuff like that. So it's so bugs isn't every like every insect. Uh, so like a. Actually, like we said earlier, like uh, so, so on YouTube, uh, you know, I use like there's that simp peak, and, and you talked about using the like colons or whatever, and then bug and mill, and but that's not bug, that's uh, simp, and that's not an insect either. It's an arthropod. So YouTube is actually correct on that. Okay. So that's one thing. Uh. Now, Casey's wondering something, and it's a very interesting little question here. Do you have any insects as pets, or do you plan I, to get any? I don't have any right now, but I do plan to get some sometime. Uh, I live with my parents right now, and uh, so I, I'm probably lucky enough to just have my collection right there. Uh, they think my family would be happy if I have, like, an ant farm or something. Oh. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'll talk get one. I remember those ant farms that you, that you could, uh, yeah, in, in the back pages of the comic books, you could send away 10 cents and uh, get an ant farm. Okay, yeah, I just told you how old I am. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, it's it's interesting that people now keep insects as pets. Uh, people will keep just about anything as pets, but it, mm-hmm. I mean, do you have to be careful in any ways about uh, how you keep an insect as a pet. Um, I mean, they're not going to take care of themselves the way a kitty will, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, anything you need to watch out for, or? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, probably depends on the insects. Uh, okay. Hmm. I, I don't know. Good answer to that. It probably just depends on the insects. Just like feed them and stuff. Oh my! And uh, well, I guess you have like a pets like a uh, black widow or something. You need to be really careful. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, fun at my uh, school, uh, at my my college I went to. Uh, they actually had a thing called the Insect Zoo Venture. Uh, that uh, that's open on uh, every other Saturday. That actually volunteer there, and uh, they actually have like. Pets like, well, they're not pets. It's, it's but uh, they actually have like insects on display there, and uh, actually there was black widow there. Actually, they had their own black widow there. Oh my. Okay. Now there's there's something for you. I hear that mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, are afraid of black widows. They instill fear in mm-hmm. the hearts of men. Uh, mm-hmm. But they are really not. The most deadly of insects, are they? Or are they? Uh, well, again, like we were talking about in Australia, probably, probably the deadliest insect would probably be in Australia. Uh, yeah, they're probably not the. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, but when it's the deadliest insect, it's probably not the black widow. Uh, and in fact, about the black widow, uh, while I was, again, I was volunteering at uh, the Insect Zoo Adventure, and, uh, uh, you know, it's the black widows that you actually keep it in a container. They generally don't let people touch it or anything because it's really dangerous. Uh, 
but uh, so someone came came in there and uh, he he's uh, he was a uh, he was a teacher's assistant uh, at, at at the college. Yeah, he was actually a plant biology assistant. Uh, but anyway, he he was there and uh, uh, someone there actually one of the workers uh, at the insect signature actually let let him touch like actually touched the black widow. <laughs> Brave person. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're probably not the deadliest insect. What is the deadliest insects? I. I maintain a healthy respect for uh, for spiders of all sorts, because um, yeah, I don't know. Oh wait, how... wait. oh wait, I have, a, I have a perfect answer. The deadliest insect is the mosquito, because of malaria. This, now there is the... something interesting, and you you never think of that <laughs> something so tiny, so <laughs> seeming inconsequential. Yeah, yeah, could be so horribly deadly. Yeah. Um, I like what Purple says. Uh, Purple Ryan with Orange says uh, Science Museum of Minnesota has a display where they use insects to clean bones for future projects. Yeah. Uh, has, has that been going on very long, uh, that sort of thing? You know, not necessarily at the uh, Science Museum of Minnesota specifically, but because I think I remember seeing something about that back when the Discovery Channel was good. Do you know um, <laughs> offhand uh, how that's done and how people do this? Uh, I don't know how long it's been going on. Uh, the, I'm trying to remember. Uh, to get some kind of insects of oh, Marty. I don't remember what insects they are now. Is it a cockroach? I, I don't remember what insects they use now, but uh, they. Uh, it's probably like scavengers or something, I think. Uh, was it burning beetles? I mean, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, they'll, they'll get insects and they'll take bones and, and stuff and they'll use insects to clean it and stuff. Because they'll basically eat the uh, the flesh off the bones, will they not? Something like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, what insect I... was... Because I don't remember what insect was that did that. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer this. No, no, not a problem. No. Yeah, I guess that's a win-win situation. It's, it's a mm-hmm. win for the curator and it's a win for the insects. You know, curator gets bones, the insects get a meal. Uh, yeah. Oh, my purple. You say that you've been bitten by a black widow. Oh, boy, she oh. boy. Um, we're going to have to ask you once once I get you on the show one of these days uh, how the heck that worked. Um, <laughs> that might explain a lot, huh, purple? <laughs> Okay, so they've been doing it uh, since the 80s. Okay. Okay, some type of cockroach? Okay. Oh, was it a cockroach? I okay, think so uh, purple what rhymes with orange is saying that some type of cockroach is used to the okay. Science okay, so Museum of Minnesota. Yeah. And, uh, oh, Robert X has something to say here, that funnel web spiders are nasty bastards. Are you mm-hmm. familiar with uh, them in, in your work, or have you done anything with a funnel web? <laughs> Uh, so I'm an entomology major, which means I study insects. And I, oh, I specifically... that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I specifically, I specifically See, I did insects. it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I do know some things about spiders, but I mean, my, my main focus is on actual insects, so. Okay, and Bad Tempered so, Badger mentions, we badgers have problems with ticks, but he's too quick for them. And I'm, I'm trying. To... Oh, okay, yeah. I'm trying to envision a tick, and I'm trying to envision whether that is an insect or something else. Oh uh, no, uh, they have four pairs of legs. They're okay. There's there's all this confusion, yeah, and it is so easy <laughs> to do because the uh, the colloquial uh, conception of insects mm-hmm. is um, is so broad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, studying entomology, I suppose, is uh, a really good thing to do. Um, just to uh, just to learn a few of these things. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, everybody's getting onto spiders over here. Any, any, <laughs> anybody have any, any fun things to say about actual insects? Um, what I, I do like the, uh, the word insect uh, from the Latin. Mm-hmm. It is cut in. Mm-hmm. And um, if I remember correctly, uh, it refers to the way their bodies are built. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't they have um, definite uh, sections that are yeah. separated from each other? Yeah, okay, so the first part you have is like the head. The middle part is uh, the thorax. Uh, and then the third part is called the, it's just the abdomen. So they, they, they're divided into like three different sections. Okay. So you got a lot of threes going on with insects. You've got three body yeah. sections, three pairs I, of legs. Actually, I can do it even more. The door, the door, the door actually divided into three, three again. Uh, you got uh, prothorax, mes- mesothorax, or med- metathorax, and the mesothorax. I, I think. Sorry, it's been a while, but in it, small shady terms, uh, we also divide the thorax into three parts again too. Uh, and in each, at each three parts, uh, uh, so in, in, uh, so the three pairs of legs, the, the three pairs of legs, you know, uh, they on each, on the three different sections on the thorax, you have the, on the first section of the thorax, you have a pair of legs, and on the second section of the thorax, you have another pair of legs, and then on the third section, you have another pair of legs. Uh, and the thing, and there's the thing about, uh, wings, uh, there's never, any wings on the first thorax. There's always wings on either on the second or third parts of the thorax. Did that make sense? Okay, yeah, because uh, I don't know how many people realize how many insects actually have four wings. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I heard... Uh, a lot of insects have four, wing, four wings. Like, uh, I, I, think, I think bees have, have four wings, and then uh, butterflies will have four wings. Yeah. Now the bee—that's the one I I did not know. You, I learned something new today. That okay, bees have two pairs I, I, of wings. I I did I did I did do. Oh my. Uh. uh the thing was, but uh, 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 when you think about flies, uh, they have one pair of wings. Uh, but they also have a. Uh, again, why I mentioned the three parts of the thorax. On the third part of uh, the thorax, they have a thing called a haltier. Uh, the haltier look... Uh, f- uh, can, can I share my screen? I mean, I'll just share my screen and show, so show you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, by all means, share the uh, share the screen. Okay. And I'll even give you a hand, because once you share, I'll pin you. Okay. I know that sounds horrible, but uh, <laughs> I, I promise it's not it's not a terrible thing. Okay, uh, I, I don't know much about Google Hangouts. How do I share my screen? Okay, um, if you take your cursor to the left of the screen, you'll see um, there's okay, a green thing with an arrow. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yay! You can see. Okay, so let's pin okay. you. Okay, you're now presented to everyone. Okay. Uh, so this is a how tier. The this will. So this is a. I think this is a cream fly. No, it's not a cream fly. What is it? Oh wait, no, it's a cream fly. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I'm always right. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this is a cream fly. This is called a cream fly. Uh, so you see, they have this this one pair of wings right here. But then you see they have this little thing called the called the haltier. This helps them with balancing. That's why they have them. Those are actually wings. Okay, I had mm-hmm. no idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they just looked like barbells of some sort. Anything but a wing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's, okay, so you're talking about the three sections of the thorax. Yeah. So yes. I'm seeing so the, the 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 true wing coming there from almost the middle of the body and then you've mm-hmm. got the uh, haltera, is that what it's called? That appears uh, to be the third uh, section? Haltera. Okay, and then 
So right behind the bed, uh, right, right behind the head, is another section. I mean, is there anything special about those three sections besides the fact that they carry wings? Or I mean, um, is there anything going on internally? You know, how does that work? Yeah, yeah. Internally, there is also something about that. Uh, oh, okay, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let uh, me. Uh, let's stop presenting. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm not, I don't remember my insect physiology very, very well. Like, I can get my physiology textbook right there. Uh, uh, but, uh, so internally, there's actually three different parts, uh, again, uh, with the digestive system. Uh, uh, it's been a really long time. It's been a really long time since I've looked at the digestive system. Okay, uh, but yeah, there's three parts in the digestive system, and uh, I, that's from studying, but I probably should refresh my memory on. So I, I might, I don't think I'll be able to go on detail about that. And there we go to the uh, to the source here. Well, it's a secondary source, so um, yeah. Our, I think I think R J will uh, forgive you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like Roger. Uh, purple rhymes with orange is taking off. Well, take care, sweetness, and Hi, um, yeah, look forward to um, the next uh, midnight live stream we do. Oh my! Um, yeah, I might, I, I might not remember that very well. I do know there's three sections in the insect's body too, in the digestive system. I'll look at that later. Maybe I can make a video about it. Yeah, what do you have here? That's interesting, Robert, that you, you mentioned. Okay. Yeah, there are more different deadly insects and spiders in Australia. But that does not mean that that's higher risk. Because uh, as Casey mentions, she guessed that the uh, the most poisonous or uh, or venomous uh, insects, that sort of thing, are solitary uh, rather than communal. So yeah, they're not out and about, and they're not they're not out drinking on St. Patty's Day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah which, oh my, oh my, that's, that's an entirely, an entire show I could do, but I think I'll leave that alone. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, it's very hard to tell with the headphones, but I'm actually wearing, uh, these are actually beetle earrings right here. Uh, they may, they're made from the, these earrings are made from, uh, the wings of beetles, uh, Bupersidae, uh, they're called jewel beetles, I think. Oh my, mm -hmm. this is I never realized that insects could be jewelry, but there it is. <laughs> All right, then. Are there any other things you would never think of that insects are useful for? Uh, very a lot of things, but they can't think of anything on top of my head. Oh, my, because I, I remember, well, my, uh, my detko, my uh, paternal grandfather uh, would use shellac on his furniture, which what? is made from the shells of lac beetles. As a matter of fact, that's where the word comes from, shell lac. Yep. Uh, so that's something for you right there. Um, I don't see I don't see uh, shellac out there as much as I used to. No, it's all polyurethane, which is so boring. Um, <laughs> But uh, um, uh, also insects are used. Uh, uh, ever heard of uh, coconut? Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's the red dye, is it not? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's red. And uh, yes, Mark, you do remind me, and I had forgotten all about the scarab beetle. Yeah. Um. Uh, so uh, yeah, the, as jewelry. Uh, and also about the co coconut. So the coconut. Uh, can I talk about the co coconut? Oh, absolutely. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so the cock and nail inside... Uh, so, co the cock and nail is actually... Uh, it's in, it's called a scale insect, which is uh, which is a bug. A, a real bug. Like we were talking about earlier. Uh, yes. So, the cock... Uh, one time, one time I was uh, on like this little like trip uh, for my it's my entomology department. Uh, we were on this like kind of, kind of a camping trip, and so um, uh, for routes of uh, like in, in, in like the country or wherever, and uh, uh, for out looking for insects and stuff, and so we we actually found again I live in Oklahoma, uh, and we actually found a, a cactus, and uh. Uh, may I can share my screen again in a minute? Uh, oh, sure, yeah. Um, th throw something up on screen if you want to, definitely. And I'll even um, set you to present. Okay, so while we're out, I uh, found this uh, cactus, and it had this this white, like, white mush on it. And uh, my entomology professor... Uh, he like scooped a little bit of the white stuff off, and I uh, he actually crushed it in his hands, and it when and it actually turned red, because it, 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 there was a scale insect in it. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Alrighty, and I'm presenting, so we're all ready for you to do that. No problem at all. Yeah, I mean, whoa! Oh, there we go. <laughs> we had the <laughs> infinite regress going there. Okay, so yeah, this is the white, like the white mush I was talking about. Uh, so uh, you can actually get one of these insects, and uh, you can crush it, and uh, there'll be a little red stuff in it. That's used for dye. And I take uh, it, I take it, huh? it takes quite a lot of those to dye your shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's actually also used in food. Uh, that's for sure, you know. Okay. Oh, uh, so cooking, cooking is also used in food. Uh, uh, I don't think we use. I don't think is used anymore in America because people are afraid of insects. Uh, like uh, it used to be used. So you have an M and M's. Uh, you eat M like red M and M's in America. Your M, &M and M's won't have any of the coconut dye in it. But I think you go to like. UK, I think. I think you, the UK is fine with coconut. So uh, you can eat red eminence in the UK. Y'all should be eating coconut in, in the eminence. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to find some British eminence. Hey, uh, Badger, <laughs> can you help me out there? Oh. <laughs> uh... Oh, that's right. Yeah, Mark. It's Mark says it's fifty minutes past St. Patty's Day. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's Monday already, isn't it? Um, you and you in Perth out there. Um, and let's see. now. Okay, what we've got coming? Have you got anything coming? Any projects that you're working on? Uh, Adriana, anything uh, that uh, we need to be um, aware okay, so of already, to watch for? Okay, so I already mentioned that uh, earlier that uh, I'm going to be on Neil's show on April 9th. Yay. Uh, I've actually recently been, been talking to, uh, you know, Modern Day Debate. Uh, do, you, do you know who they are? I'm trying to think here. I'm not sure I know. Yeah, there are some things the Lavender Lady does not know. Uh, the Modern Day Debates is uh, similar to the non cycle show, where they do debates and stuff. Uh, although they're, they're... Uh, so I've recently been talking to Modern Day Debates uh, about signing up to actually do a debate on there. Oh, boy! Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't have anything set, set up right now, though. Uh, but uh, I wanted to try to do... I, I, I'm not... I, I want to try to do a debate on a, for, for my this is gonna be my first debate so uh for my first debate I want to do a debates on the the reliability of the gospels. Oh, that ought to be a really interesting mm -hmm. one. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh. Uh, I'm also going to try to do the same thing with the non sequitur show. Uh, I I talked to someone yesterday who said they might be able to get me into the non sequitur show. Now, that would be amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked with Kyle. He's a big sweetie. I've worked with Steve. I, I, mm -hmm. um, he's another sweetie. Um, mm -hmm. So you'd, uh, you'd very likely fit in very well mm -hmm. on there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I just uh, found Modern Day Debate. Uh, mm -hmm. It is the channel called Modern Day Debate, is yep. it not? So yep. I'm going to throw into the side chat here mm -hmm. the, um, excuse me, the um, URL for mm -hmm. Modern Day Debate. Uh, so everybody uh, can uh, make a note of that. And when Adriana gets on there, uh, watch out for her and the mm -hmm. whole bit like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, if nobody minds, going to go over to... Uh, uh, I, I have her uh, channel URL in the, uh, in the description, but I'm going to mm -hmm. throw it into the side chat again just for everybody. Um because everybody definitely wants to um, punch the subscribe button on her channel. Yeah, uh, yeah, sense. yeah she's um, just getting started, but mm -hmm. already the stuff I've looked through um, is is amazingly interesting. Uh, what do we have here? We've got. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, seven videos I see up here stretching back to uh, what YouTube says is a month ago. And I noticed that the one you made two weeks ago, uh, Buzz News number one, is oh, yeah. on the Wallace's Giant B. Um, mm -hmm. And that, yeah, everybody had thought that that was gone, if I remember correctly, was it not? And then they, they, uh, they had a, the first sighting in 38 years. So, uh, um, uh, I don't know if I explained this in the video or not. Uh, so, Boston Giant B was originally discovered by, uh, like, Alfred Russell Wallace. Uh, it, didn't, it wasn't discovered, like I said, it wasn't discovered until 1981 uh, by someone, by an Uh So, yeah, they, they thought it was extinct. Uh, and then since nineteen eighty one, there's been a couple more signings. Uh, uh, I've read, uh, I don't know, I, I read contradictory, I read contradictory points while was researching uh, Wallace the Giant B. Uh, so I, I think uh, Wallace the Giant B. In sometime in two thousand eighteen, uh, someone actually sold on eBay a, a specimen of Wallace the Giant B for nine thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. And then uh January twenty nineteen, uh they went to uh what was it what was it Indonesia? Can, can you remember what it was? Was it Indonesia or Thailand? I'm trying to remember now. Sorry, I should I think I Indonesia has come up in conversation in, in association yeah, I, I think was, with Wallace's I, I think it was Indonesia. Okay, so in, Indonesia of uh, they uh uh I, I think what it was really popular about the initial uh, they found a female specimen of it i think they, they found a female specimen in Indonesia. okay yeah i uh, i just looked up uh yeah we have um let's see if i can pronounce this mega mega chile pluto if i mm -hmm. haven't totally screwed up the uh, binomial <laughs> name I think that's is a very large Indonesian resin bee. Mm. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's the... Um, and I see that they are listed as vulnerable mm -hmm. in the uh, conservation status. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's another reason that uh, that whole specimen sold on uh, eBay and stuff kind of mm -hmm. saddens me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, um, 
And as far as that goes, yeah, we're... Um, is anybody over on the side chat or anything um, up for a uh, for an after show or do I get a vacation today or how do we work that? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> whether you're uh, in, if you are Adriana as well, um, I can do one. I'll just hang on for a little bit here and see what kind of um, oh. see what kind of response we get. Um, yeah, because um, the last couple of days have been really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. We had a um, midnight live stream with uh, Purple Rhymes with Orange. Uh, mm -hmm. Thursday midnight went on for about three hours. Um, oh, yay. Um, and uh, then I had... Um, What's the name of it? I was just there, and I forget the name of it. Uh, movie night. Movie night was uh, Friday midnight and went on until something like, well, I, I was up until about 7.30 uh, Saturday morning. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's all sorts of fun here. Okay, we've got a couple people interested. I'll tell you what, then. I am going to set up a... Uh, a live stream, uh, an after mm -hmm. show, because I had not set one up yet. Um, I did not know whether uh, whether there would be one. I'm gonna, while uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to give it a uh, talk. Uh, going to talk my way through this. Oh. Okay, and then you've got that. You've got that. That's oh. perfect. Oh, uh, uh, I mentioned one thing. Uh, sorry if I'm not if I was able to answer everybody's questions. Well, I tell you, there's uh, there's very likely going to be a a good opportunity for question time because mm -hmm. I uh, I'm thinking that oh, yeah. people can bring their questions into the yeah um, yeah they can she answer the they can ask questions live. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to have that. And the event is successfully saved. How do you like that, kids? <laughs> okay, what do we have here? Um, that's the live now. We don't want that. We want upcoming. Because I am going to get the um, link address. Uh, where do we put it now? I know you're in there. There you are! Uh, so far, so far, Spooky, the, uh, the computer is doing not too bad. I'm still moving a lot of stuff back and forth, but, um, uh, we're looking good. Uh, so, so let's see, what have we got here? I want to, okay, Orla... Oh, and Badger. Yeah, those are a couple of people we can bring in. Um, and um, okay, and then we can do yes. Robert X says we can talk about insect porn. How <laughs> is that? Oh my word! Okay, before we go, let's let's get this um, while it's hot. Blood Blood Wolf Moon asks, "Is there a way to control leaf-footed bugs safely?" Now I don't know what a leaf-footed bug is, so maybe we can start with that. Uh, I, I do. I I, I do. Uh, leaf-footed bugs. Leaf-footed bugs. There are a lot of insects, uh, so I'm, like I said, I'm I, I, I'm not gonna know everything about every insect. There's over a million species of insects, so it's not like I'm gonna know everything. Uh, so I, I don't know. I probably just like insecticides or something. I, I don't. Sorry again, I'm not able to give a good answer. 
Okay, well, hey, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer if you do not indeed yeah. know. It's, yeah. yeah, you can't, um, I, I remember, you know, this is going to go sl slightly off topic, but I remember a story where uh, Rocco Patron, uh, launch director through the Apollo program at uh, NASA, actually fired one of his people for trying to bullshit his way through a question yeah. to which he did not know the answer. Rocco would have much yeah. rather had him say, I don't know, but I'll find out. Um, okay, so um, I'm looking up... Uh, yeah, here's Bad Tempered Badger. Yeah, I, do have, I do have this book uh, that talks about pests. And it's based in Oklahoma. Alrighty then. Oh, come on. This this thing is giving me a hard time. There we go. My computer's giving me a little better time at this point. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to um, start to invite people onto the uh, onto the panel. Um, we'll move over to the uh, we'll move over to the after show. Adriana, you do huh? not have to do a thing. All you have to do is sit there and wait. Um, <laughs> It'll just take a minute or so, and um, okay, this is this is a wonderful thing. Um, I thank everybody for um, for coming by, and I hope that um, I hope that you'll keep coming by, and I hope you guys will come to the uh, the after show. And Adriana, I want to thank you extremely many much for uh for coming on coffee with lavender like and as i say saving my life because i as I, I hadn't even booked anybody and i think it was thursday already wasn't it something like that yeah. um so this has been a wonderful wonderful show so far and i hope it gets even better into the after show and um what i'll say then is uh thanks a lot folks see you on the other side